evening and welcome to Mind Mangler, member of the Magic Circle. Prepare to be astounded, delighted, and amazed, and please welcome to the stage, the Mind Mangler. I got to where I am today by learning how to control others, by learning how to manipulate the human mind. I'm, I'm, I'm. You hear, I want you to think of a colour. <laughs> Any colour at all. What colour are you thinking of? Blue. Shut up. <laughs> what colour are you thinking of? Green. Green. Oh. <laughs> Try something else. You hear? I want you to think of an animal. Frog. Any frog. Do not let me influence you. Say frog. <laughs> what animal are you thinking of? Elephant. An elephant. <laughs> not frog. <laughs> You're like putty in my hands. <laughs> You here? I'd like you to stand up for me, please. Thank you very much. Yes. Now, I want you to clear your mind. That was very quick. Okay. All right. All right. Now, I want you to clear your mind and think of an object. All right. Just watch me and think of any object. Just watch my hands and face and think of any object. Just watch me and think of any object. Take your time. Relax and watch. Think of any object. Watch. You thought of an object? Excellent, wonderful. Have a seat, and we'll come back to you later in the show. I suffered from severe night terrors. <laughs> from the age of four to the age of, well, I still get them. <laughs> as I've gotten older, I wanted to know, did these dreams have a deeper meaning, or am I just, as my sleep therapist said, a weird guy who often pays late? <laughs> I told my sleep therapist I believed these dreams were not just dreams. They were, in fact, premonitions of things to come. She said I was beyond help and terminated my therapy. <laughs> Ironically, I hadn't seen that coming. <laughs> But from then on, I wanted to be sure I would always remember my premonitions. So, I began taking pen and paper to bed with me, and I soon became a proficient sleep writer. <laughs> now my premonitions are the finale of my act. This morning, I took my sleep-written premonition, and without reading it, I rolled it up and sealed it inside an airtight jar to prevent spoilage. I locked that jar into this wooden chest, which will remain much like me at the Magic Circle, suspended until further notice. <laughs> At the end of the show, I will unlock the chest and reveal my premonition. I can only do that with the key to the chest, and unfortunately the key to the chest is locked in that mistake. And I can't open the safe without the code, and I uh, did make a note of the code, but I didn't want to lose it, so I locked it into the chest. And I can't open the chest without the key, and the key is locked in the safe, and I can't open the safe without the code, and that's locked in the chest. There is a spare key to the chest in my car, but the key to my car is locked in the safe. <laughs> There is a spare key to my car in my house, but my ex-wife changed the locks, so we don't <laughs> Now, um, I need to be sure, obviously, that no one interferes with this prediction throughout the show, so I'd like, uh, yes, you please. Can you please keep, what's your name? Hmm? Rory. Rory, I knew it. All right, fine, Rory. I want you to keep an eye on that box throughout the show, all right? Make sure nothing happens to it, make sure no one touches it. Don't get distracted and start enjoying the show. Just watch the box for the next 60 minutes. Your ticket money will not be refunded. <laughs> You shall learn that mine are rather more developed than your own. I have a sense of taste, but it is a strange taste, for I can taste people's first name. <laughs> you hear the check, Sherpies? 
dramatically for everyone to hear, what is your name? Michael. Michael. <laughs> Are there any Johns in <laughs> <laughs> no Johns here. Michael, are there any Johns in your immediate family? No. Are there any Johns in your extended family? Not even close. Not even close. <laughs> have you got any friends called John? I used to have. You used to have? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> You never liked him. <laughs> Have you got any enemies, culture? <laughs> I knew it. This is not my only skill. I also have a sense of smell, but it is a strange smell, for I can smell what your job is. When you arrived here at the venue this evening, you queued up outside. I was secreted in that queue. I smelt every one of you, and from that, I was able to determine what your professions are. As I predicted them, I wrote them down, and the time has come now for me to reveal them. You here, please, in the blue jumper, what is your job? Project manager. Project manager. What projects do you manage? Wind farms. Say again? Wind farms. Wind farms? You, okay, all right, that's impressive, all right. Okay. You manage a wind farm. Yeah. How does one do that? You just blow really hard. <laughs> What, what's your role in the wind farm? Um, making sure they get consent. So like... Making sure they get consent? <laughs> <laughs> what some of them aren't allowed? <laughs> Just rotating without consent. <laughs> That's a genuine problem. <laughs> Wind like big turbines just popping up being like, ha 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 ha! <laughs> well, I was impressed before, but now it's <laughs> stupid. <laughs> you get consent. So you're a project manager. Right, okay, I see why you said that now, all right. <laughs> the truth is too stupid. That's why I wrote down, when I smelt you on the way in, that you work indoor. Hey. <laughs> yeah, let's try someone else. Who else have we got here? Yes, uh, you're in the white t-shirt. What's your job? Yes. Uh, I work in uh, computer hardware. You work in computer hardware, not software, hardware. What, like, like, B um, like building mice and things? <laughs> sure, why not? Sure? No, don't pity me. What do you I build computers and servers. You build computers and servers? What, from scratch? With the components, yeah. With the components? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> Say you without <laughs> Do you have consent to do that? I always get it first. You take bits of computers and, and you make them into full computers. And what do those computers do? Um, mainly they're for the NHS. Yeah, mainly for the NHS. Yeah. So you make bit, you take components and make them into computers which make people well. Yes. That's kind of right. Yes. That's why I wrote down, when I smelt you on the way in, that you have a vague. <laughs> <laughs> the time has come, please. The time has come for me to reveal my sense of hearing. For it is a strange hearing. I can hear the thoughts of playing cards. I hear, I guess I can. I hear them in my mind. I, I, I. I need a member of the audience to come up and join me on stage. Who'd like to come up? Far too keen. Anyone else? Anyone? Anyone. Thank you very much. Now, can you please confirm we have never met before? No, we do not live together. Right. <laughs> what a strange thing to say. All right. Have you ever been on a stage before? Only at rehearsal. I see. <laughs> What's your name? Steve. Steve. Right, okay. No, Brian, isn't it? We said Brian. Thank you, Brian. I build wind turbines without consent. It's like, catch me if you can, isn't it? Thank you, Brian. Now, think of a card. Three of clubs. No. Think of a card. Don't say it out loud. 
card. Three of clubs. <laughs> Think of the card in your mind. I'm, I'm, I'm. <laughs> not that one, right? Think of a card in your head, not three of clubs. That won't work. Why? Because you've told me what it is. Think of a different card. Four of clubs. No. <laughs> Do not say it out loud, right? Do not say it out loud. Think of a card. In your brain. If you have one. <laughs> not the three of clubs, not the four of clubs, and don't say it. Right? Right. Right. No, not the five of clubs. It was the final no, no. It's like having Debbie McGee back no, no. Oh, She's proper good. She's, she's not good. Oh, she's better than you are. She's not better than you are. Of course she is. Well, you think this is easy, do you? Yeah, do watch this. Are you there? What's your job? Shana, na, na, na. Theatre Usher. Right? <laughs> You're losing your cool. I'm not losing my cool. You are. Just never mind. I'm, I'm. <laughs> well, you all think this is easy, do you? Yeah, all nodding. You all think this is easy. All right, fine. You in front row there. Yeah, no, you've changed your mind now. <laughs> now you've realised it's interactive. <laughs> What's your name? Lucy, I knew it. Or if I, Lucy, you think it's so easy? All right, you try, all right? I'm going to think of a number between one and ten, Lucy. If it's so easy, why don't you tell me what number am I thinking of? Eight. Eight. <laughs> well, that time it was eight. <laughs> <laughs> One in ten, right? Anyone can get a one in ten. I can get a one in ten. No, you couldn't. Of course I could. All right, think of a number between one and ten. All right. Three. No. We'll try something else. We'll try something else. Right, you there in the pit in the pig. What's your name? John. John, where were you? Where? <laughs> <laughs> you are the most insane group of people. Right, the board page, on the board. Right, okay, now, right, okay, I'm gonna think of a colour this time. I'm gonna think of a colour, I'm gonna write it down, okay? Now, why don't you tell me? If it's so easy to read mine, I'm fine. Right? You tell me if it's so easy to read mine, I'm fine. Stop it, right? Come on. You tell me if it's so easy to read. Thoughts? <laughs> what colour, John, am I thinking of? Mustard. <laughs> mustard. <laughs> mustard. <laughs> it is mustard. <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> Ha, <laughs>
ever any of you wonder? And of course, my man lad, Grand Illusion. <laughs> But I will now take those powers outside the theater. This is a live feed of Niagara Falls. Freeze! <laughs> is nothing more than our perception. Is the glass half full or is it half empty? Am I just a sad, divorced man? <laughs> what? No, I'm not. Shut up. <laughs> or am I a single man who just happens to cry a lot? <laughs> <coughs> Did my wife take the house, or did she unburden me of my material possessions? <laughs> and my dog. Do I, do I still love Amy, or, or you know, or have, I, have I moved on? I have. I, I have. Uh, the, point, the point is, there are different ways of looking at things, and your perception can be very different from reality. We now need one member of our audience. <laughs> we now need one member of our audience to come up on stage and be healed. Who'd like to come up and be healed? Would you mind coming up and being healed? Thank you very much. Give them a big round of applause. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Well, what's your name? Michael Cartledge. Michael. Say again? Michael Cartledge. Michael Cartledge. Very good full name. Excellent. Wonderful. Uh, wonderful, Michael. Now, I'm sensing... Yes, I know. I'm, yes, I'm getting it. Yes, I'm getting it. I'm, yes. Yes. Are you in need, Michael, of medical healing? Yes. Impossible knowledge. <laughs> Don't worry. We will heal you. And now I'm getting a diagnosis coming through. Yes, I'm sensing that in the past, you have, in fact, been diagnosed with poor eyesight. Is that correct? <laughs> We're going to do that with these word cards. So first of all, Michael, with your glasses on, are you able to read that word? Uh, maintenance. Maintenance. Fantastic. Excellent. Excellent. Absolutely correct. And can you now please take your glasses off? And without your glasses, are you able to read that word? No. No. He can't read anything without his glasses. <laughs> Don't worry, we will restore your vision. But first, Michael, sleep. Very good. Are you asleep, Michael? Yes. Don't say yes. <laughs> Are you asleep, Michael? <sighs> now, you're falling deeper and deeper into a slumber. The moon shines down. The night owl hoots. That's a duck. That's a duck. <laughs> it was just a duck at night. If there's ducks at night, now Michael. <laughs> Quite a tense sleeper. <laughs> You're now completely under my spell, and I'm inside your brain, fiddling with your ocular senses and proving your eyesight. And when you wake up, you will have the gift of extraordinary sight. Wait up for me, Michael, and please, without your glasses, can you read this word? Allow a clergy. Right, that's not right. Um, okay, let's try a simple word. Simple word. Can you read that word? A detect. A detect. No, just read the, sound the word out for me, Michael. A detect. Okay, you've got your glasses on, remember. Just uh, try and read that word. Escrofreezy. Okay. <laughs> Michael, you're, 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 you're broken. Go and have a seat. <laughs> I will just get a number of our team will come around with a liability waiver at the end. Uh, just, uh, just sign it. Don't read it. You won't be able to read it, but just sign it. <laughs> point in 
tonight's proceedings. savings on an antique glass vanishing cabinet used by Victorian magician Robert Milan. <laughs> Unfortunately, that cabinet is unavailable this evening due to technical reasons. That reminds me, if you exit through the main doors, please do be careful, there is a lot of broken glass out there. <laughs> Fortunately, it's provided me with an alternative. This is the glass vanishing cabinet. <laughs> Cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> Once locked inside, Robert Lalanne would turn around to demonstrate all four sides of the cabinet to be solid. <laughs>
interval gene. Now, there are 52 playing cards in my own gene. <laughs> there are 52 playing cards in the standard deck. We're going to choose just one through a series of decisions. Uh, so let's talk to someone down here. I guess uh, you there in the black top. Would you like a high card or a low card? A high card. I knew it. A high card. Would you like 10, Jack, Queen, or King? Queen. The Queen, very good. Now, is there any way I could have known that you would have chosen the Queen? No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Therapy. And that's why I've invited a guest from the professional medical community to join me on stage tonight to shed some light on the mysteries of the human brain. I'm, I'm, I'm. Please welcome Head of Neurology from Edinburgh City Hospital, Dr. Shaw. at the end of the show. No! No, we're not. I'm fed up of always being there for you when you're doing your stuff. And you're never there for me when I do mine. Like what? Like when I own four gyms. <laughs> <laughs> no more, no less. That's the thing, you don't have your own stuff, all right? That's why you locked my phone in the safe. Because you know, if I take that cruise ship gig, you will have nothing. You, you oh. think that... You think that's why I did it? Yes, because you're a hanger on. That's it, I'm done. Aww. What are you doing? What does it look like, Keith? <clears throat> yeah, his real name's Keith. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Always someone else's fault, isn't it? If anyone could do this better than me, then ask someone else. I've got a prediction for you, mate. Sha na 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 na. <laughs> you're finishing this show alone. Oh. Well, not a problem. Now, if you're all really magic, this should be Bob Kojak's phone number. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Bob Kojak. <laughs> you're Bob Kojak! That is not my secret. <laughs> Why have you done this? I I didn't want you to quit, mate. You seemed so down a couple of weeks ago that I... Well, I... I suppose I made Bob up to give you a bit of hope. So, wait, wait, so you... You, you, you were the one who, who paid for the venue? Yeah. And you, and you sent me the, new, the jacket? Yeah. And the scented bath candles? They were for me. <laughs> but how, how, how did you afford all this? I've kept the receipts to claim it back. <laughs> who from? You. <laughs> Oh, look, mate, I'm... I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm sorry too about what I said. Ah, uh, forget about it. Here's the receipts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, the code to the safe! The code? What is it? What is it? One, two, three, four... <laughs> One, two, three, four. Yes, it's open, it's open. Yeah, okay. Good, it's coming. What? Watch, phone. Yes, 
the key, the key for the box. What makes you come do your big finale? Bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. Now, you were watching the box, you were watching the box the whole way through the show, right? It's been lost all this time, it's been lost. Now, uh, turn it around. We're going to open this box now for the first time in the show. No one's come near it. I've got the key here, I'm going to undo the padlock. The inside is a premonition. Something I wrote down in my sleep last night, and if I am as magic as all of you are, this prediction will mean something. <laughs> um, uh, okay, um, well, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's a K in the middle there. Uh, your name is Keith. Yup. Um, and then we've also got, um, Thank you. 